I now request Madam Nora K. Terado, Under Secretary, Deputy Minister, Department, Ministry of Trade and Industry, Industry Promotion Group, Philippines. Good morning, everyone. Mr. Mukisa Kituti, Mr. Kamal Morarka, Mr. Miss Dorothy uh, Tempo, distinguished uh, leaders of government, distinguished leaders in business, ladies and gentlemen, I'm so delighted to be here with you. <coughs> Firstly, I'd like to thank the organizers of the Global Economic Summit for <coughs> inviting me in this forum. Every year, GAS has been bringing people together successfully to discuss and bring to bear topics that truly matter. And so I am honored to be part of GAS this year for Dialogues on Women Empowerment. A forum like this will, provides an avenue for learning from the success stories of others and from the lessons they learned from their struggles, failures, and insights. It is a good time to shape the future of our discourse about how women can improve the skills in women empowerment. The business landscape have changed, and in my country and in other parts of the world, with the advent of advanced technologies and various disruptive business models. We are now facing the rise of a new economy, the digital economy. We know that the world is now shifting from traditional to digital. As countries embrace the rise of digital economy, governments have to fast track policies and interventions that would uplift the innovative spirit of entrepreneurs, women and men alike. Policies that would enable an environment for a new breed of businesses so businesses could thrive. In the case of the Philippines, we have been implementing various interventions that would help women improve their entrepreneurial skills, capac capacitate their businesses, and help them innovate to incre increase the chances of success from traditional and new markets. And among these initiatives, on top of my list, and probably my favorite, are interventions that do focus on women in technology. So let me move on that one because technology and social media have afforded us access to a wide range of information. There are many stories out there that are based on facts and evidences, which are powerful enough to build confidence of the women to enter in new fields, for example, in the field of technology. After all, all businesses now must be enabled by technology, and perhaps the essential first is to have a change in mindset, especially in overcoming fear or reservation in the wise use of technology. Madame Mar 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 Marksova mentioned about an interesting story, and I will reiterate that, that even the World Economic Forum started saying that there are many pioneers of computer programming, and this and this were women. The story goes that a group of women secretly fought during World War II while men were off to fight in various battlefields. These were women calculating trajectories and ballistic tables for soldiers and bombardiers in the air. These women were truly the mathematicians or computers, as they were secretly called. They empowered themselves as well as the men in the battlefield by doing complex work. And a documentary, and I watched it already, was created. Watch it, and it's very, very interesting. It's an amazing story. And contrary to the belief that technology is historically male-dominated field, we have these women computers, and there was also a lady called Elsie Schutt, a woman who founded the first software business in the U.S. Shoot formed her business at the time when Bill Gates and Steve Jobs were both only three years old. 
When Elsie Shute founded Computations, Inc. in 1958, many of you were not born yet, it was on, all of her company programmers were women. It was only in 1980s when the, when the once female dominated field became a field for men due to the advertisements highlighting computers as toys for boys. When Elsie Shute was asked why he, she thought so few women were programmers, Shute explained, I think if there had been fewer women than men in computing, it's because there have been, they have been discouraged back at the education level from majoring in math or engineering or computer science. Truly, mindset plays a very important part in building confidence in women that she can be as good as men in the area of technology. I think I wish to highlight uh, the case in the Philippines where we are doing better for women. Department of Trade and Industry in the Philippines, we have various support services, particularly for technology-driven businesses, that also allow women to participate in propelling the economy. We have the Slingshot Philippines, a government-initiated platform that supports public dialogue and partnerships and helps in building, nurturing, and enabling environment with policy and programs for technology and innovation. Uh, and this includes also a program in Women in Tech, powered by Slingshot. With Slingshot Philippines, the government demonstrates its commitment to the micro, small, medium enterprises in nurturing an innovation system and supporting the startup community, including women. It provides co-work space that we believe are more flexible and practical for women through our negotiation centers around the world. Ladies and gentlemen, nowadays, women have better opportunities to be empowered. But first, women need to start with a change in mindset, in believing that we, women, are empowered, or at least we can be and will be. Technology is a great equalizer. With technology, women are more enabled in unleashing their potentials and ideas, in creating innovative solutions for themselves anywhere, anytime, be it at home or in their self-development and in their entrepreneurial endeavors. On a higher paradigm, women are partners for growth, and are equally important as men in terms of advancing economies and building strong nations. With that, thank you and best wishes to all of us. Thank you, Nora Ma'am, for initially reminding all of us of the film Hidden Figures yet one more time and also for sharing your valuable insights this morning.